Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. Today I am reviewing a book and I am reviewing The Three Hairs Bloodline Book One by Jeffrey Simpson. This is a book that was released last year in 2018 and the sequel just came out so the author asked me if I wanted to read the first and the second book against honest reviews so here I am reviewing them and also being asked by the author to review books I think it's very very cool and they sounded like cool books that I would enjoy so I said yes. I will be reviewing the second book in a video very very soon because I'm just separating the reviews because that makes sense in my hand. This book is already out and it's an ebook and kindle and also paperback if you're interested to checking it out I will leave the goodreads link down below as per usual. Bloodline follows Ethan Drake. He lives in this place called Winslow Falls and he and his best friend likes to go out into the woods and like pretend they're survivalists and like they make treasure maps for each other and follow treasure hunts and stuff. They are best friends and yeah they are 13 year old boys being happy and cool in general but then one day his father dies in this horrible accident so the next summer they think that the summer is going to be pretty boring, the year has been pretty hard on him. But then they find this treasure map up in the attic in his house and they believe that maybe it could be his father's and they go out on this hunt trying to puzzle all these pieces together, trying to find out that where did this trash him up come from? As I said, we follow Jacob and Ethan. Ethan is the main character, Ethan Drake, and Jacob is his best friend, as I said. And I also meet this other girl called Elizabeth, or they call her Liz, that also joins their gang. So I'm, of course, not going to spoil it. I never do. But when we find out what is behind this mystery, it is fascinating but also very strange. It says in the synopsis of the book, because I always check so I don't spoil anything, that's not already said, it says that Ethan Drake is a living legend if only his father had mentioned it and I'm just like I guess. Also the wind is like horrible outside so I'm sorry for the noise. I thought this book sounded interesting because as I said we followed these puzzle pieces. It's like adventurous and fun. I knew it was not a fantasy so I just expected kind of like, I don't know, just like mystery but slash just like follow puzzle pieces. When you find out what's behind everything it gets kind of strange but not strange in a way like supernatural strange. It just gets strange because I don't believe what's happening on the page. And I read fantasy, I read a lot of weird things and I don't mind it being weird or supernatural or like there's something more going on in this world. But this book is so serious in its very unbelievable themes, what's behind everything. These are 13 year old boys finding this secret and getting kind of a responsibility that I don't think is logical for them to get because they are kids. And I know like people would read this and be like, if you were a kid you would think they're really cool that they get to do this. Just like you read, I guess, Percy Jackson, not that this is a fantasy, but for example, and like you think Percy Jackson is so cool, he's the only one that can save everyone. But there it makes sense because it's a fantasy, it has these magical abilities, he's the only one who has these magical abilities, but this is like a real world book, I guess set in a fictional town, but still it's the real world, but is made into this very serious thing, and then we have these kids, and for me it was just not enough. I mean, again, I can see what the author wants to do. It wants to create these kids to be cool and have this responsibility and be the only one that can save everyone. But since it's set so realistically, I just feel very strange about the whole thing. And also, like, the characters' journeys are done really strange as well. It feels like a fantasy-esque thing. But again, it's set in the real world. But I know that it's all made up and that stories are made up so you can do things over the top or do things not realistically, that's totally possible. Which it just wasn't believable. Like the main character Ethan at some point needs to reflect upon himself and like go to this whole thing because something happens. And like after two weeks he's a totally changed person and like has these super good skills and has become like a new dude and I'm just like this is a 13 year old boy and I can see what the other wants to do so badly. And again if I read this in like a fantasy 
a book. It would have been totally a different experience, but for me I could just not forget where they were. And I think that that was the main issue. I guess the writing was convincing enough for me to believe it all. Uh, and I think that's sad, because I would enjoy the story more if it didn't all just like feel weird to me that these are just kids that getting all these things happening to them and I'm just like stop but again it's a book so like it's supposed to be made up but for me it just wasn't enough to carry the story and again I read books about kids that have done amazing things but there it was believable and here it just felt weird but I guess that's because the book takes itself so seriously and if it was more I guess another tone in it I think I would have experience it differently and also the book has some serious themes that i don't think is approachable. well like for example Aiden's mother has a really deep depression after their husband his dad passed away and it's said several times that she has this depression she's not doing well but it's never done anything about it we never talk about it it's just like mentioned in passing many times and i'm just like you have this chance for a son and a mother to connect and like i don't know talk about mental health and the shape of like losing your parents but it's never approached it's never used well in the story it's just there and then they're just like doing this mystery thing instead and i think that was quite sad because there was an opportunity to write about this and like relate to the kids out there seeing the mothers being depressed and you could use that in a good way but here was just like mentioned in passing and i i didn't like that also like it's never mentioned at all what kind of race these characters are. I know like race is not the most important thing but it's not mentioned at all how they look like so I guess it's assumed that they are all white or the author chose to not say the race and thereby like they're just blobs so you could just say that the characters are black or Asian or whatever but for me that's not good enough. You need to know which characters we are reading about. I don't know if the author just assumed we think they were White, which is the normal norm or we wanted just to connect with all things but there is just no mention of what kind of race they are whatsoever in the whole book and for me usually since that's the approach we've been living off for forever that is assumed for me that they are white and that means that all the characters were white and again that is boring they were all white that's fine but like it just wasn't mentioned at all as i can recall but maybe it was mentioned between the lies and where and i have forgotten but i didn't notice it as i'm talking at least i mean i guess it was more focused on this adventure this quest this mystery thing and that's fine but it had all these small elements that it could have used more and explore more i know it's like a Millie Red slash ya book and that i guess the author just wanted a fun adventure story but i have read fun adventure stories that also take up all these other great themes and uses them so well and here it was just very straightforward and the main characters just got this very big responsibility that doesn't make any sense whatsoever but they did it anyway it's like a series where you would watch i think like small kids detectives and you think it's super cool and then you are like oh my god i need to fight this evil guy and it's like fun and cute i guess like you could say like nancy drew not that it's similar but like she solves these cases and she's just a kid and in, if you look upon it that way it's fun it's like a bit over the top fun but for me i just this was not a middle grade slash ya that fell into place for me and I just generally I was entertained at times I wanted to see what happened to them but the story itself just didn't catch my attention as much as I would like it to but yeah I would talk more about the sequel very very soon as well where I won't spoil what happens in it so if you want more expanded thoughts if you're more curious about the series I recommend checking out that review but I think I cover my thoughts pretty clearly here I would give the book like 2.5 out of 5 stars. I feel like maybe someone would say to me that this book is maybe not made for you, you're too old to enjoy this, but if you know my reading taste, I love middle grade and I love young adult etc. I just feel like this book just didn't work for me, but I can see it be a lot of fun for others. And that's it. I'm gonna go now. Thank you so much for watching this video. Again, check out my review for the sequel coming very, very soon, and you will see me soon in a new video. Bye!